Here's the dresser I'm starting with, but I need some artwork to match. Let's make some custom. So I need some artwork to match with this dresser. This is going into a nursery and we would like some nursery decor. So right now we don't have any. And I have these old art pieces that I picked up for free off Facebook Marketplace, but they're kind of, they're kind of dated and they're not exactly the colors that we want. So let's give these a makeover. What I do have is this gorgeous paper that's the same colors as my dresser. So I'm actually gonna make some art using this paper. So let's frame this out. The first thing I wanna do is go ahead and cover this existing image in a coat of black paint. I'm gonna use uh, Rethunk Junk, and this color is called Midnight. Just gonna apply this using a zebra brush. I'm gonna load my brush about there. And then I'm just gonna paint inside my frame. And this will get good coverage. It should only take me one coat. I'm only doing this so around the edges you don't see the colors from the print that's in here. Here is where I am at the end. And one coat of my rethunk junk gave me good enough coverage that I can put my paper over the top of this. I'm gonna let my paint go ahead and dry for a little bit. All right, so my paint is just about dry. I've got a couple wet spots where it was a little bit thicker, but this paint dried really, really nicely. It's got a beautiful finish on it. This is an all-in-one style paint, and it's got a really nice sheen on it, almost a satin sheen, where I don't feel like I would need to top coat this at all. Um, my paint is still a little very fresh so I don't want to give it a scratch test quite yet but I'm going to go ahead and just start my decoupage project right over the top of this. Okay when I'm decoupaging a thicker paper which this is a little bit thicker paper this is a gift wrap from Society6 I like to use a wallpaper paste and I'm going to use Roman brand 543 wallpaper paste but I like to back butter my thicker papers. The purpose of this is I want to actually let the paper soften a bit and I also want to make sure that it has good contact when I lay it onto my art. So this is going to help it make good contact and also soften my paper a little bit so that I can get it to stretch while I'm laying it. This is going to help me keep the bubbles out. Now that my paper is nice and back buttered, I'm going to take this and set it aside until I'm ready to lay it and I'm going to go ahead and get some adhesive onto my art. Alright, so my paint is nice and dry. I used Rethunk Junk by Laura and it's got a beautiful sheen on it. This is a single coat of black, which is impressive for a black to get this good coverage on um, a single coat and a beautiful finish. I wouldn't feel like I needed to top coat this if I was using this on a project. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use this underneath my decoupage. So I'm going to add my wallpaper paste also to here. The reason I painted my board is because I did not want the edges uh, to show through and I didn't want to take the chance that any part of my image might show through my paper either. It's not a translucent paper generally, but I didn't know that any of those colors might be bold enough to show through. So I'm going to give this a nice coat and the wallpaper paste has a nice long dry time on it. So I'll be able to get my paper on here before this even starts setting up. That's another thing I like about using wallpaper paste for decoupage. And I'm going to start in the corner and I'm going to find my 90 degree angle. All right, and once I've got that nice into the corner, I can start smoothing out my paper. Once my paper was smoothed out to all my corners, I came back with a really sharp razor knife and I went ahead and cut away the excess of my paper. Be sure to use a really sharp knife for this or wait for your paper to dry. It can have a tendency to tear while it's wet. 
Next, I'm gonna pour a coat of clear resin over the top of my paper. I'm gonna use the frame to hold it in, so I don't really need to do a lot of prep here, but I do need to mix up my resin. I'm using Amazing Clear Cast Resin from Alumalite. I'm gonna mix equal parts of part A and part B into a cup and make sure I stir them well for about four minutes. Once my resin is well stirred, I go ahead and pour it onto the top directly over my paper. I'm gonna spread the resin evenly over the top just using a silicone spatula tool. I use silicone tools with my resin because the resin won't stick to them. Once it's dry, I can easily pop off the excess resin and my tools are ready for use again. You always want to be sure that you're wearing gloves when you're working with resin, number one, because it can make a huge sticky mess, number two, it can cause skin sensitivities. This is a fairly thin layer of resin over the top and I'm just doing one coat just so it has the look of glass over these framed prints. This was really easy to do because the frames act as my border and hold the resin in so I didn't need to tape off anything, so this was a pretty easy resin project. Once the resin is evenly spread over the top and into all the corners of my frames, I came back with a heat gun just to release any air bubbles from within the resin. Once I let this dry for about 24 hours, my frame prints are done. They're beautiful and they match my dresser. I'm thrilled with these. If you enjoyed this video, you can find links for everything I used in the description for this post. As always, you can find more Brushed by Brandy on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, and my website at brushedbybrandy.com.